In this video, I'm going to go over an advanced functionality within your Jolt lists using flags and autocomplete. I'm going to go into one of my lists. To get here, I just went to lists and edit lists. And my example I'm going to show you today is a cooking and cooling log. Flags can be used on either measurement or yes or no items. And autocomplete can only be used on a yes or no item. Let me run through this list. This is a little bit more of an advanced checklist because I'm also using conditional display and corrective action as well as flags and autocomplete. So within your measurement item, when we scroll down, you have your flag section here. So you can add a flag again to any measurement item or yes or no item. Once you turn the flags on, it's going to prompt you for which flags you'd like to set for inside your range and outside your range. You can have two ranges on any measurement item. And when you come into this drop down here, if you currently don't have any flags created, you just come to the manage flags here where you can create a flag. You can give it a name. You can change the text color. So if you're using any characters or you can use uh, these little emojis. And then once you've created that flag, you'll save it and it'll become a part of your drop down to select from. The naming convention is very helpful here to know which flags you want to use in which lists or in what use cases. There is a report specifically on flags and there's a video that ties into it as well where you can view your report focused on which flags displayed. Once you've added your flag and you can have multiple flags as well. So if you want to have a few different items, then you can. When you complete this item on the app, let's go ahead and move over. I'm going to come to the first item, cooking temperature. I can use a Bluetooth thermometer to record this temperature or I can use a manual entry. When using a Bluetooth probe to record temperatures, when you're on this screen, you'll notice in your measurement items when you're entering in a flag, you also have a record color option here. You can pick between failed, warning, pass, or none. And when you're in the app, this will actually display that color based on if it's in range or outside of range. So let me show you this quick little image here. So here they're using a probe to take temperature of tomatoes. The screen turns blue as that temperature is captured and recorded. So you can change that color to correspond with in range or out of range if it's a pass or a fail. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do the manual entry. So I want to be above 165 degrees. If I enter in 165, we'll go ahead and record that. Here you'll get the little thumbs up emoji and that's the flag that I've assigned to inside my range. Now if I enter in a temperature, let's say it's 145, it's going to show with the little X letting me know that I'm outside of my range. So depending on in or out of your range, you're going to have those flags display. And again, you can do this on yes or no items. When using a yes or no item, you assign a specific flag or flags when answered yes or when answered no. So again, you can either create flags or use any that you have existing and apply to yes or no based on how they answer that flag will display. You do not have to have a flag for every yes and every no. If you're focused primarily on a yes versus a no, if you want to focus on when it's not what it should be, perhaps you create and apply only flags for your no items, for example. And then when you're looking at that flag based report, you'll be able to see how often no was triggered. So that's how to use flags create them and add them to your items. Now to take this a little further and go a little more advanced, we have a feature called autocomplete and that applies only to a yes or no item. If I scroll up just a little bit, there's this completion mode for my yes or no item and there's a manually complete, meaning when I'm on the app, I am required to complete this yes or no item. Whether I select yes or I select no, it is required for me to complete that task or that question. And if I had flags, those flags would be there. However, a autocomplete is based off of flags. So if I come to my next yes or no item, I'm going to scroll down. I have this set to autocomplete based on the count of flags. So here, if the flag count for this item, for this particular flag, drop down so you select which flag. You have your little operator tool here, so greater than or less than. 
greater than, less than, equal to, or just equal to. So just like our conditional display, you've got your operator here. So how many times do you need this flag to display? And the number, and it will then auto-complete to answer yes or to no. So with this holding within temperature flag, I have it tied to this measurement item here. So holding within temperature, if this flag is displayed more than zero, so it has to be greater than zero, I want this to be answered yes. So if we come back to my list, I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my hot holding temperature and it needs to be above 140 degrees. So we'll just enter 150 and now it is automatically answered for us. Here, I manually entered in my answer of yes, but below it is auto completed for me. And as you can see, I can try and click on it and it's not gonna answer for me. It's grayed out slightly. So I cannot adjust that in any way, shape or form. It's all based on the flags that display here. So let's clear the response and let's do 130. Go ahead and record that. You can see it now gives me a different flag and it changes that response to no. And then here I could have corrective action display or I'm using conditional display here, prompting them to discard any product below 140. So flags are used to show a visual for the user that it's within temp or the answer is within range or it's not within range, as well as triggering autocomplete on a yes or no item. Now for me, I like to use background colors whenever I have an autocomplete item. I like to use a gray color just because it makes it stand out that this is an item you can't complete and it somehow differentiates it from the other tasks. And here I've added additional colors just to make it pop. And you can pick and choose what colors you'd like to use or you don't have to use colors at all, but this will still be grayed out and you'll be unable to complete it. Now in this list, I have two additional layers that I'd like to go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and record that we're above temperature here so that we're within temperature. It's gonna answer this question as yes because of that flag. I'm going to scroll down and I have a two hour cool down. Now in this case I need to cool the product down for two hours and I need to be below 70 degrees and in some cases I may be below 41 degrees which means I don't have to cool the product down any further. It's met temperature and I don't need to use my additional four hours to continue cooling down the product. So this one is a little more complicated. I'm going to show you on the web portal what it looks like. So let's come to our cool down temperature. And I have two ranges established. And then when we come down to the flags, I have established different flags for the different phases. So I'm two hours within temp. I am two hours outside of temp. And then I'm also two hours below 41 degrees. This will then trigger the auto completes on these two yes or no items. So let's go to the 70 degree first. And here's my flag. My two hours is within temp. If it's greater than zero, we're gonna answer yes, meaning we've reached the first threshold of our temperature. When we get to the 41 degrees, we're looking for that two hours below 41 degrees. We're looking for this flag specifically. And again, if it's greater than zero, we're gonna answer yes. Based on if this is answered, we may or may not need to continue to a four hour cool down to continue to get to the 41 degrees or below. So here, if we enter in our cool down temperature, you can see again, these are grayed out. I'll go ahead and enter in my temperature. Let's say we're at 55 degrees. I'll go ahead and record that. And you'll see it is answered that yes, we are below 70, but no, we are not below 41 degrees. So now it is prompting for an additional four hour cool down where I'll need to enter in the final temperature. Now, if we reach temperature, let's say it's 39 degrees, then it will answer yes, that we're below 70 degrees, and yes, we're below 41 degrees, meaning no additional items are displaying, and our two flags are displaying here on this cool down temperature. So to review, flags can be attached to measurement items, as well as yes or no items. Those flags can then be used to answer a yes or no question with our autocomplete functionality. With flags, you have specific reporting that you can view how often a flag was triggered or displayed, 